Okay, guys, we're going to be just running through this today. Normally, we have a little more comprehensive breakdown of trailers, of everything that's happening around us, but Bungie just completely exploded with information, and I'm going to try my best to give you the hot points, and I will guarantee it, I'm going to miss some stuff. So don't crucify me, man. I know I'm missing some stuff, but I'm going to start with, like, some of the biggest things. So first up, today is the launch of Season of Arrivals. Now, with all seasonal stuff, we'll have a new season pass, new exotics, new exotic Quest, yada yada probably the biggest thing though is this afternoon we have a new dungeon coming out yes it will be based around the nine it seems to be a very trippy dungeon it dips into some of our other foundries out there foundry armor pieces and such which is why i'm sprinting through this video right now so i can jump on there and start prepping for that dungeon again five o'clock this afternoon pacific time is when the dungeon will be available for everyone to play for everyone whether you have the season pass or not now moving on bungie really talked about the future today man this was a big topic and i think they wanted to answer two questions number one they wanted to answer the more direct what's coming this fall and number two they wanted to put our minds at ease in regards to bungie's commitment to destiny 2 well lo and behold we have a roadmap over the next three years this coming up fall is going to be called beyond light next year 2021 the witch queen obviously sabathun and 2022 will actually be called lightfall and as you see right there you've got the traveler and inside of it a pyramid midship very interesting there beyond light all on its own is interesting because we're actually going to be getting a new subclass this coming fall called stasis now it has a lot of darkness based look to it and it appears eris is the first one to really start dabbling with this new subclass now something i want to bring up about this subclass luke smith said it in the interview with dr lupo earlier that the subclass layout for this new stasis subclass won't be the same as we have now he stated that there's going to be more customization and that in the future that same level of customization might be coming to all of our subclasses aka fellas we might be going back to destiny one based subclasses do you hear me do you remember the customization imagine it right now being able to choose code of the missile with knockout maybe you want to rock a sticky knife with your blade barrage or celestial fire with well of radiance do you see where i'm coming with this guys this open customization will allow a lot of freedom here for us to experiment more with our subclasses, something that's been really locked down more. And depending on how stasis and that subclass layout tree will go, could determine the future customization that may be coming to our other subclasses. Either way it goes, that is the right step going forward. We want more customization. And if anything, we want to return, maybe not identical to what it was back at D1 in terms of our subclass trees, but it would be nice to get as close as we can. Now, Bungie has also mentioned a few things, but something that was also put in text earlier was that this coming up fall we're actually going to be getting three entire raids yes there's going to be one set in the deep stone crypt on europa as part of the beyond light expansion luke and mark noseworthy mentioned vaults of glass also returning to us that's right they didn't mention a third so i have no idea what the third will be will it be crota's in i have no idea not even going to begin to guess but vault all on its own god dog it guys i'm so excited can you imagine playing vault at 60 frames per second 60 frames per second 105 field of view can you imagine fellas oh speaking of 60 frames per second new consoles were also mentioned next generation consoles ps5 and the new xbox will be able to play destiny 2 at 60 frames per second now they actually said 60 frames per second 4k resolution i won't believe it till i see it but considering the customization that's just been given out to our controllers i feel like bungie is going to also give other open customization to console users say you want to play 2k resolution at 60 frames per second but a higher field of view it's a possible Possibility that open customization is on its way considering how beefy the next gen consoles are going to be either way it goes for my console players that have been playing 30 fps listen man destiny is a beautiful game but when you start playing it at 60 oh my god this game is gorgeous you're gonna love it man now they also mentioned crossplay, but not the way we wanted them to mention it it's intergenerational crossplay, as in playstation 4 players and playstation 5 players will be able to play the game together and that's the same for the old and new generation of xbox players now the question was brought up especially in the dr lupo interview what about mixing all of them stay
Stadia, PlayStation, Xbox, PC, and having true crossplay between all platforms in the future. Mark and Luke both stated that yes, they are working on that. That's actually the big challenge for 2021 is to finally bring us all together and have true crossplay between all platforms, which is amazing. Like I said yesterday, I dream of a day where you could go to an LFG thread and it just be one thread. It's not split between four different platforms. We don't have Stadia, PlayStation, Xbox, and PC LFG forums. No, it's just one. And you just unite your team together and get right into it. I think you're going to see a lot of improvements everywhere. More people doing raids, trials, dungeons, all types of activities that can be played with all of your friends, regardless of whatever platform they're on. That was probably one of the biggest announcements, as well as just 60 FPS coming to next generation consoles. Now, starting in September, Io, Titan, Mercury, Mars, and the Leviathan are going to be cycled out and no longer accessible. Yes, Bungie actually talked about something called the DCV, the Destiny Content Vault. They're going to start cycling out old content or content that's not played on as much and bringing in new content and new destinations. And they go on to mention that as the years progress, they're going to essentially go back into that vault find the best hits, the things that were the most popular, pull it back out, ramp it back up, and throw it back at us. Now, they mentioned it's not copy and paste. That's not how it works. More than likely, what he means by that is like right now, we've only been able to experiment with Titan on a very set location, just right there on the rig. It goes back in the vault. They recreate it. They do some other crazy stuff, maybe even throw a raid on it. Who knows? Pull it back out, throw it back at us, and now we get to experience Titan with an entirely new destination. Listen, there's a lot of great assets there, and I'm completely down with this. I know a lot of people are saying, whoa, whoa, I don't want to play old content. Well, that's the point. They're pulling this stuff off the table to introduce new content. So it's a win-win. You get the best of the old and you get new stuff. Now, as far as what's happening story-wise, what's going on? Yes, you're right, guys. The stranger, all the rumors surrounding her, she's back, man. And she's done teamed up with Eris and the Drifter, which seemed like an unlikely fire team. But obviously, stuff has gotten real. And by the way, the stranger is Anna Brace sister right am i right okay but it shows the inside of the pyramid ship slightly we don't really get to see much of it but it does show some of it now around the stranger was pretty interesting we thought this was a ghost luke was actually asked this question in the interview with dr lupo and he said no it's not a ghost lupo proceeded to ask him will we have access to this little floating fish thingy in the future luke says maybe we're working on it which made us all wonder is this a pet or or could it actually be a darkness based ghost? You see, when we actually look at the layout of the future of Destiny, the little roadmap over the next years, Lightfall really makes me believe that in 2022, we're going to actually come to the conclusion of Destiny. We're going to come to the conclusion where you have to choose a side, light or dark, the true RPG aspect of Destiny that everyone's been yearning for. The stranger could possibly be dabbling with this because she's not a guardian. Now, we'll say that little floaty fish thingy kind of gives me some non vibes, right? Like it's seemed like it was based from the nine and isn't that the thing about the nine i mean they come off pretty damn creepy but aren't they like really involved with the darkness i'm sure we're gonna know more about it this afternoon when we actually play the dungeon now you probably noticed that the stranger was carrying around a pulse rifle that's right that is actually no time to explain we're getting that exotic back it was a pretty fun one back in d1 but by no means op granted that was also because pulse rifles at least in that archetype wasn't necessarily in the best of spots i will say if it does return and it's a 390 round per minute pulse Pulse, be looking for a pulse rifle buff leading into the fall expansion as far as the gameplay trailer goes this was trippy a lot of the tentacles things really reminded me of like the gorgons from gorgons maze in vault of glass you see like the tentacles pop up here and there but the frost theme in relation to europa and by the way they mentioned that europa is like the planet where all exos came from probably misquoting that regardless that's actually pretty dope now some key things that we saw from the trailer first up we saw the darkness based subclass or the stasis space subclass at work yes a warlock is rocking a staff looks like a frost staff freezing stuff and making it explode stasis obviously being used to freeze those enemies we see a hunter here dual wielding what appears to be axis look this is what i'm talking about man the darkness doesn't have to try to sell me you show up dual wielding anything i'm team darkness man now as far as the season of arrivals gameplay trailer yes we got to see this it also appears that we're about to lose some planets right off the bat now i haven't even jumped into destiny yet so this might already be going on looks like titan and mercury though might be on its way out right now and the pyramid ships are starting to park up next to the planets that they're about to be destroying which is kind of daunting now it also appears 
that some of our favorite exotic swords are making a return. That's right, Dark Drinker in the flesh. Looking amazing. We got some cool looking weapon that I can't even, I don't even know what it is. Some dope looking bow. We also see some weapons that, man, look very similar to our King Falls weapon, right? I have no idea where we get this. This could just be like the seasonal weapons. And then the Road to Ruin new exotic quest. This looks like a Void Trace Rifle. Again, to me, thematically, it looks like some straight out of King's Fall. Now, the last clip, which looked absolutely amazing, was a Titan here throwing a bolt out of Bolt Caster. So I'm assuming we've got Bolt Caster, we've got Dart Drinker, we gotta have Raze Lighter, right? Like, Raze Lighter's gotta be a thing. So guys, that's pretty much everything that I'm gonna go over right now. We've got stuff rolling out as the day goes on. I don't even have time to cover the sandbox. The hype train is left, though. The Prophecy Dungeon has kicked off this afternoon, and we're gonna be diving straight into it, fellas. So be looking out for that. Fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming and watching, and as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right. <laughs>